began as a dream, a theater company creating plays performed by black people about black people. In the mid-60s, playwright, actor, director, Douglas Torn Ward, producer, actor, Robert Hooks, and a theater manager, Gerald Crone, Gerald Crone, built the dream, and many have come, many who are up on this stage tonight. Among its distinguished productions, Charles Fuller's A Soldier's Play, Douglas Turner Ward's Day of Absence, and Leslie Lee's The First Breeze of Summer. It is an honor to present the Theater Longevity Award to the Negro Ensemble Company and to bring forth the Interim Artist Artistic Director, Mr. Charles Weldon, to accept that award. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Uh, my name is Charles Weldon, and I've been the artistic director of the Negro Ensemble Company now for three years, going into my fourth year. The first three years was arresting a million dollar debt, and it's gone. It's gone. It ain't there no more. It ain't there no more. I talked to Douglas Turner Ward. He sends his blessings, and he gave me something to read, and we worked on it. But if this, I said, I kept telling him, Douglas, it's just a minute. All I have is a minute. He went, ah, oh, yeah, I know, I know, I know, Roger. <laughs> so this is, a, I won't read it, but I'll put it in a, like a, a flyer, and we'll put it in the lobby, and you can read it. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to thank you guys so much. The Negro Ensemble Company has been so good to me. I came to it in 1970, and that's 37 years ago, and it's 40 years old. So I got a lot of history there. Don't I, Barbara? Yeah. Don't I, Woody? Everybody in here, Hattie? Yeah. All right. God bless you all. Greetings. My name is Louise Dente, and I welcome you to yet another edition of Cultural Caravan. On this edition, we're on location at the Negro Ensemble Company, an institution in our community that for over 40 years has brought us high-quality educational a, um, theater that focuses on the African-American experience. And we're joined by the artistic director, Mr. Charles Weldon. Welcome to the Cultural Caravan. I welcome you to my office. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, um, Charles, you know, I really, you know, over the years, I really respect the wealth of work that this institution has done, and particularly the fact that you've celebrated 40 years, and particularly that's a lifetime in terms of being here in the theater. And and, and, you know, for those who are not familiar with the work and, you know, tell us what inspired the development of this institution. Well, the, when this uh, particular theater company developed, of course, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't around. I wasn't in New York then. I was just thinking about what my life was going to be. I was in California. But uh, in 1967-68, that was the first season of the Negro Ensemble Company as it is now, the name. Before then, I think they were called, they called themselves something else, the St. Mark's Theater or something. It was Robert Hooks, Douglas Turner Ward, and uh, uh, Gerald Cronin. And they, Robert, uh, Robert Hooks had an apartment that he kind of uh, moved his furniture around, knocked some doors out, and they had started some little theater companies there. They would write and uh, they would perform and that's how it kind of all started. This is what I heard. Mm -hmm. Douglas wrote a play called The Day of Absence. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, when, they, uh, when they put it on, it was such a hit mm -hmm. that out of that, they got a good grant from the Ford Foundation. It mm -hmm. was a million dollar grant. Mm -hmm. And that million dollar grant got them into the theater, which, which was uh, to become known as the St. Mark's Theater, which was on 2nd mm -hmm. Avenue and 2nd and, mm -hmm. uh, Avenue and 8th Street, St. Mark's, mm -hmm. St. Mark's Place. And you'd go upstairs and it was maybe a 150 seat house. And that's where I came to know them in 1970 when I came to New mm -hmm. York. But that started the company. Day of Absence uh, was the play that was, it was two one acts. It was Day of Absence and another play. And right after that, they did a play they, it's called Song of the Lusitanian Bogey, mm -hmm. which was really a big hit that took them over to Europe. And they toured Germany and France and England and all that. Uh, and they were off and running, mm -hmm. off and running. And that started the Negro Ensemble Company. And that was the 1968, 67-68 season. And that's why it's 40 years now. 
this is the, this is a like in the the latter part of 40 years right now yeah. Yeah. yeah you know when I think about NEC coming along at the time particularly in the 60s where African people of African ancestry were really just stepping out on the world stage and saying look we wanted to be identified as being a proud people and the theater being that vehicle through which we can tell our stories mm -hmm. and and also understanding the fact that NEC particularly came on board where there really wasn't a lot of st you know stability in the theater particularly as related to African Americans so you know seeing you know Robert Hooks uh, Douglas Turner Ward and Gerald Cronin coming together realizing that there was a need for mm -hmm. us to have an institution that really um, could could hone, help have artists hone their craft. Yeah, because mm -hmm. there was not black theater. There was not black theater that, like we know it. Mm. Like we knew it. I mean, it's it's still here now. But it like it uh, in the seventies and eighties, mostly in the seventies, there was just a up upsurge of black theater. It was black theater was all around, mm -hmm. and it, some of it came out of the riots. Mm -hmm. Some of it came out of the sixty five riots. I know it, the the Watch Theater Company came out of the 65 riots because then the the powers to be put money in there and they said let's give these people something to mm -hmm. do and so a lot of them were smart and they started theater companies mm -hmm. and and one of the shows one of the things that was written at that time uh, it was a play called uh, Big Time Buck White mm -hmm. and it was Dick Anthony Williams and uh, 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 people that came out of the Watts Writers Workshop and that play was a comedy about this this particular group of blacks got together and was like uh, beating the government actually mm -hmm. that was what the play was about although and, and so that but it was a comedy and I, the reason I bring that play up is that that happened to be the play that got me to New York mm -hmm. because by the time I decided I was I you know I, I went to audition for someone who I had no idea it was starting a theater group in San Francisco called Dialogue Black and White and my sister Ann Weldon, who was an actress and who started me in this business, mm -hmm. told me you should go and audition for these guys. And then she says, maybe you can be an actor. And I said, well, I am. I've never acted. I was a singer, but I wasn't mm -hmm. an actor. Mm -hmm. She said, well, it's a musical. Mm -hmm. And uh, Oscar Brown Jr. Mm -hmm. had written music to Big Time Buck White and turned it into a musical. And uh, uh, ironically, it became a hit and at uh, a little off, a little off the beaten pathway there in San Francisco called a committee theater. Mm -hmm.